Good evening. Uh, in case you're wondering where you've uh, wandered into, this is a meeting of the Situate Zone Board of Appeals. Tonight is October 17th, 2019. Uh, I am Brian Sullivan. I'm the acting chairman. Our current chairman is out of town. To my left and your right is Mr. Ed Tibbetts. To my right and your left is Mr. Tom Cavanaugh. Uh, with us this evening is Mr. Bob Vogel, the Building Commissioner and Zoning Enforcement Officer. And uh, Beth is our Recording Secretary. Uh, if you're choosing to address the board, I just ask that you kindly state your name and uh, if you're a situate resident, your address for the record. Uh, the first application this evening is continued from uh, September 19th. This is hearing of uh, Bradford Merritt of 493 Country Way in Situate. Uh, they are requesting a special permit slash finding in accordance with section 470.9 of the Situate Zoning Bylaw uh, making to make a determination of suitability for a unified parcel known as a zero and 483 Country Way in Situate. And uh, I believe this first application is going to be continued because uh, there are only two of us that can do that hearing and they'd need three. Um, so I would move that we continue that to our next meeting, which is going to be on November, November 21. Uh, any discussion on that? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so that uh, first application uh, is moved to November 21st. The second application is of Mr. David Roycroft. Post Office Box 177 in North Situate requesting a special permit uh, slash finding pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 6 and Section 810.2 of the Situate Zoning Bylaw to construct an addition to the pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling at 8 Carver Ave in Situate, increasing the gross floor area by more than 20%. Uh, is anybody here on uh, 8 Carver Ave? Yes, sir. Would you kindly uh, come forward to the table? State your name for the record. David Roycroft. Okay. And what is it that you would like to do, Mr. Roycroft? Uh, attach an accessory dwelling to the existing structure. Okay. And uh, looking at the assessor's uh, field card, your home was uh, constructed in uh, prior to the adoption of zoning in situate um, and you have uh, pre-existing non-conformities in as much as uh, it is a 10,000 square foot zone and the lot size is um, 1060. So the lot size is conforming. You have uh, two front yard setbacks from Egypt Ave and Carver Ave. You have a pre existing non conforming front yard setback, um, which is uh, 14.9 uh, feet. Your proposed addition will be conforming um, as to the front yard on Carver. It will be non conforming. No, is, the deck. Deck, no. is the deck going to be uh, covered? On the new addition? Yep. Yes. Nope. Nope, that okay, so that's conforming. So that's conforming. Your rear yard uh, setback will be conforming. So it'll be conforming as to all setbacks from what I can see. Is that a separate lot next to the house on corner of Egypt and Cairo? The, the property was originally two lots, and then when they changed the zoning to 10,000, it became one lot. So or it's not two buildable lots. It's just so the, the parcel that, that borders um, Egypt Ave is oh that's a house there's a house there. there's a house there okay so you you don't have two side two front yard setbacks you only have sorry. the one front yard setback thank mm -hmm. you but it's still it's all conforming yeah I think the only yep. non-conformity is the front yard and that's not changing yep and you're increasing the uh, Gross floor area by 14%. No, that's not covered. <laughs> God bless Excuse you. Me. Um, 988, but the living space is only 750. Correct. Currently, they have 
1,110, increasing it by 988, so it's an 89% increase. Okay. Tom, do you have any questions? Mm, just the, the common entry there, is that going to be kind of like a mud, like, like mud room exactly. type of area? My wife is Chinese, and you don't wear your shoes into the house, so that's an area to take your shoes off. There will be access to both houses. Okay. And, there, and the stairs that go into the basement will be there. <clears throat> and who, who's going to live in that accessory dwelling? Well? Me and my wife and child. Okay. Now you're you're aware that we don't grant accessory dwelling permits, but by the, the bylaw, the planning board awards that. Yeah, I'll be but with the, them next Thursday. But the 750 is allowed by. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, that's allowed by right. The, you know, it's mm -hmm. okay. You're you're you've researched all that and you're aware of all I that. Did, yeah. Okay, that's, that's my main question. Ed, do you have any other questions? No, I don't see that. Well, Other than the front yard setback, I don't know why he's before us. I know the only thing I'd say is that when this is presented to the planning board, um, it should be presented as though as the um, accessory dwelling that you're asking for a permit for is the 750 square feet of living space. The common entry actually has to be counted with the exi as an exist as an addition to the existing dwelling. Okay. And it would be, I think, important to make that you know, to make that statement. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the common entry is not part of the proposed addition for the accessory dwelling. Okay. It's part of it, I, it's I would actually not even have dwelling. it a okay. common entry. I just simply say it's an addition to the, the existing <coughs> structure okay. and that the, um, the proposed accessory dwelling will enter off the um, existing structure. Okay. I, I, you just don't want any of that square footage Bleeding into the added into it. it. It may it may still qualify before the board, but I think it becomes more of a question for the board to consider. If they don't have that before them, they don't have to consider it. Okay. I agree with Bob, <laughs> clearly. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this application? Or speak about this application? Okay. Um. I move to um, find that the proposed addition um, on the plan by Webby Engineering Associates dated September fifth, September fifth, two thousand nineteen, um, for the addition does not create any new nonconformities nor intensify any existing nonconformities, and to the degree that it does. It is uh, not substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Mr. Roycroft. I just have one quick question, and I'm not sure if this ends up being the planning board. There may be one small change to this, and it has nothing to do with the setbacks, but if you look at the frontage, um, that small porch which goes into the common area, mm -hmm. um, my wife finally saw the drawings and she was uh, wondering if we could make that small porch just go wall to wall and put a small roof so that it matches the existing house a little better. From our perspective, we're, we're concerned with the setbacks of the roofed area. Okay. Um, and the setback, is, the setback of, that you're concerned with, is, or that we're concerned with, is the 14.9 of the existing structure. Um, your proposed uh, structure is more than 10 feet further than the necessary, no, 30 foot setback. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it is at the 30 foot setback. So you could come forward. Is the proposed deck mm -hmm. roofed or not roofed? Well, that was my question. Could it be roofed? It, and that's actually set further back than the. As long as it doesn't extend closer than the 30 okay. foot, it wouldn't affect mm -hmm. us. Okay. Correct. Right. The roof, the roof would basically be in parallel with the uh, Carver Avenue um, line of the new addition. Just make sure you you have it surveyed and staked so that you don't find out after the fact, after you've built something, that you've created an encroachment. Because we, we had someone in last month that put a garage in the setback and they're going to have to tear it down. No. Okay. Well, and the... And Certainly, with the, the plans that you present to 
the building inspector for approval for building permit should show the what you intend to build, and then okay. what you intend to build should be what you build. Okay, so mm -hmm. just have this updated with that on it. Sure. That that makes sense, Bob. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. The third application this Who evening that one? is of. Uh, oh, I'll take it. Uh, take it? Thank you, John. The third application this evening is of uh, my grandmother, Mary Sullivan, um, <laughs> who is actually uh, dead. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not my grandmother. No relation. Uh, Mary E. Sullivan, trustee of 23 to 25 Rebecca Road, requesting a special permit in accordance with Citrus Zoning Bylaw. Section 470.6F and a finding in accordance with Situate Zoning Bylaw 810.2 in Mass General Law Chapter 40A Section 6 and or any other relief the board may grant to raise a pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling on a pre-existing non-conforming lot at 23 to 25 Rebecca Road and to reconstruct a single-family dwelling thereon which will not be substantially more detrimental than the existing <coughs> non-conforming structure or use to the neighborhood. Uh, representing the applicant this evening is uh, Attorney William Mornberger. Uh, welcome, Bill. What uh, What's going on? What are you proposing? Uh, we're proposing we go with Brendan Sullivan of Kavanaugh Associates, and he'll explain on the plan in a minute. But no relation, by the way. No <laughs> relation. Just three Sullivans. <laughs> Sullivan, no, no one's related. <laughs> Mary Sullivan and her husband, who's deceased, and their family have owned this property for a long, long period of time. In a storm, uh, not last winter, the winter before. It was substantial damage was done, and so taking the opportunity fine to make this flood compliant, we received an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission that was issued on the 9th of this month. And basically, the uh, building, they're going to raise and reconstruct this to make it flood compliant and to center it on the lot, particularly on the southerly side. Uh, the neighbors uh, are only one foot off the line, and we're four feet. The new, the new setback's going to be 20-odd feet. But... It's a pre-existing non-conforming structure and a lot. So that's the reason uh, why we're here. It's a single family that's a story and a half, and it's going to be two stories. The footprint with our computers and power outage today, uh, the, it's going to be a two-story home. And uh, so the square footage of it is increased by about 100%. But the actual footprint probably only increased about, I can't tell Brandon if it's 30 or 40%. In that range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, that in a nutshell, and Brendan can explain, it's flood compliant. Uh, we have our order conditions. Uh, in addition to, they're basically centering this because right now everything is skewed off to the right-hand side yeah. and the other part of it's vacant. So we're putting it in the middle. Uh, we are part of the house presently is in the velocity zone. The entire house is being taken out of the velocity zone, although uh, some of the deck is in the velocity zone. Uh, we're maintaining the front yard setback, although there'll be more frontage for the house on the setback, but uh, our position is, is to the extent that it's an intensification, it's not substantially more detrimental, and also uh, we do comply with section 470.6F of the bylaw. This is going to be uh, before the building permit is issued on this. We are, we are uh, CONCOM's good on it. Uh, there is no water course issues, and uh, Bob will ensure that you know we're meeting the building code uh, 780. Mm -hmm. So you're not uh, creating any new nonconformities. Arguably, you're intensifying the current pre-existing nonconformity by extending the line of the dwelling, but mm -hmm. in mitigation, you're getting it out of the floodplain and out of uh, a substantial portion of the home out of the uh, velocity zone. The new area that's going to be in the velocity zone is not living area, it's deck area. That's correct. And the existing structure is less than, well, slightly more than five feet from the, the neighboring structure, which is a yeah. hazard, yeah, which is a being fire mitigated. hazard, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got access around the entire building for fire access yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, utilities. You know, this, this really was an issue <clears> in that... Uh, you think about that when that fire happened at uh, in Hummer Rock, in Hummer Rock yeah. and how quickly those houses one, two, three, four. So creating these breaks, I mean, we can't you can't make people do it, but it uh, certainly when the opportunity presents itself, it does um, it, it does improve the uh, the safety of the area. Well, they could reconstruct on on the footprint. Yeah. By right. Yeah. They're actually asking for permission to make it 
safer, more mm -hmm. reasonable, and uh, um, more centered. More centered on the law. Yeah, it's just it's essentially just turning it. Yeah, counterclockwise. It's really ground zero. Looking at that photo, it's just it's like <laughs> things coming from the northeast. This is we like know the we know the area yeah. really well. <laughs> Spent some time on a deck up the street, uh, friend uh, Bob Egan's house. Um, any any other questions or comments, no. Uh, Bob? No, no, not really on the on the zoning issues. Um, when it comes down to construction detailing, if you can um, uh, design the deck so that it's free of the house, um, you know, and not not connected. You'll probably get a much better deal on your flood insurance. We're going to look at that. Yep. Okay. Uh, is there anybody? I'm sorry. I have. Um, so we had a similar situation in Cohasset where it actually it, it 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 didn't actually FEMA came back and told us that it was we did that same exact thing with the 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 velocity zone was we hugged the back of the velocity zone right with the face of the house mm -hmm. and we did we built the deck separate on yep. piles yep. and separated from the house. And she went and tried to do a loma to remove the house from the floodplain, and they wouldn't let her. <laughs> well, but you're still in the floodplain, just so you're right. in an A zone as opposed to a V zone. Right, right. And they wouldn't let her remove it from the V zone. No. I'm no, they said it was. In, they said, I know they said it was included in it, so we told her not to, and she. Yeah, I mean, it's more <laughs> expensive to build it that way with a separate yeah. set of pilings. Obviously, yeah. if it's not going to get you anything, then. Right. But I'm surprised to hear that. Mm -hmm. Is, is there anything else? Uh, is there anybody in the audience that would like to uh, weigh in on this application? I'm actually the builder or the general contractor, and I just wanted to say that from the plan of the deck, um, the deck is attached to the house. You, you're, I'm sorry, your name, sir? Uh, Jeffrey Lincoln. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hearing nothing else, um, I would entertain a motion to uh, grant the relief sought. Move to grant, uh, move to find that the raise and reconstruct as proposed on the plan by Kavanaugh Construction uh, Consulting, Consulting um, dated 9919, uh, no revisions, for uh, 2325 Rebecca Road situate. Um, will not create any new non conformities to the degree that it um, extends or um, an existing nonconformity, it is not considered substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll submit a proposed decision. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you. Thank you. A, you a fun way to do a, the decks is to set the, the decks so they can be raised up on a, a pivot. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, sleep, sleeper, sleeper the joist in. Put a rod through and stand them up. I think they're going to end up being like ten feet in the air. So that may be that be that won't be substantial. That will not be an issue. But I think it might be an issue for the neighbors, but not for <laughs> not for the soul. I spent a few years doing some doing work on waterfront. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, the next application is of uh, Robert Engel of 16 Old Farm Road in Woburn. Requesting a special permit slash finding pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 6, Section 810.2, and 470.6, the Situate Zoning Bylaw. Uh, oh, this is the uh, 96 um, Hummer Rock Beach Road. Right. Uh, Mr. Engel has withdrawn. Move to accept uh, withdrawal without prejudice. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, uh, last up, we have uh, the status report from our good friends at the Stockbridge Realty Trust and Dakota Partners. Thanks for coming in. How you doing? I'm well. How about yourself? We're doing great. <laughs> Thanks for the plans. <laughs> Hi, you're welcome. Mark Pullout with Dakota Partners. So as I promised you guys, I'll come back. Um, just give you an update what's going on with the project. So part of it was uh, some real plans for the architectural. Mm -hmm. Before, as you saw, we had a couple renderings, and that's really about it. We were just in the the beginning stage of designing it. So well along with the plans, those are basically done. They have one more unit type that I need to finish up. Uh, Bob has been reviewing our plans for a permit. 
right now. So we're yep. just about ready to get going on that. He's almost done. Uh, we have done some clearing out on the site so that we can set our sediment erosion control mm -hmm. and uh, just reflag the uh, the wetland areas, which uh, there'll be a walk through next week with DEP, CONCOM, as well as uh, the building department. Mm -hmm. So uh, overall, everything's moving along smoothly. We'll be heading to a closing, uh, I would expect, in the next month or so. Congratulations. That's good That's news. Good. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long, long haul, as you're well aware of. I, uh, I was, uh, I had nothing but time in my hands a couple of days ago. And there was a posting on Facebook about uh, the um, scandalous uh, things that are going on. The Herringbrook, uh, Herringbrook Meadow Project, and uh, people were decrying the building um, in the wetlands. And uh, uh, there was a person in situate that pointed out that you're free to attend the meetings and to uh, read the decision that uh, that the zoning board filed and uh, read the history but um, it seems as though a lot of folks that are on Facebook don't really trouble themselves with learning the facts but no, it's um, easy to throw out yeah and as you see the meeting is so well attended tonight with folks concerned <laughs> about the uh, the building of affordable housing in situate um, and in market rate housing for that matter um, but in any event um, you know looking at the plans they're they're attractive um, you know a, kind of a arts and crafts uh, style uh, construction I assume that the um, the siding will be um, that uh, like, looking at hardy board as yeah. well as cedar shingles yeah, uh, so it's, it's kind of a mixture right now. It's, it's really a pricing exercise in that respect, as well as durability, long-term wise. Um, I was at a house uh, down the Cape that had a, an outdoor shower. And they had cedar shingles that they had stained, and within 10 years, they had rotted through. Yeah. And they uh, replaced the cedar shingles with a PVC product. And it was virtually indistinguishable from a pre-treated pre cedar shingle. Really? Yeah, I mean, you had to touch it. Is this Brian yeah, Sullivan? You had to touch the shingle. <laughs> Is this Brian Sullivan, the anti-vinyl? Well, you know, there was, there's vinyl siding, there's vinyl siding. This, right. was, this, is, this was, I was like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. It, it really 20 was. years I've been listening. Product, I know we're on television. Product, 20 product years I've been listening to this guy. Product, product. <laughs> We all evolved. <laughs> <laughs> Even dinosaurs? No. Yeah. No, it's. I'm proud of you, Brian. It's it's a. It was. I was amazed. I was no, amazed at how. I mean, because vinyl <coughs> siding for years was just vinyl siding. Correct. No, and the certain seed product. The the, the shingle is. I mean, look at the stuff that's at the yacht club, on the the new structures there. They won't let me in. <laughs> well, you're Irish. I was, I was. I was asked to leave. No, I dropped my son off at the yacht club because he works no. there. So I know. Maybe next time. No, it's. No, I, I think I agree with you 100. percent The um, some of the engineered um, materials are they're sold because they'll last longer and they absolutely they do I mean I've yeah, got the maintenance is the, tremendous the, the longevity of it is incredible yeah but you can get the same look and texture and feel in some cases mm -hmm. so it's and just beautiful in terms of the 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 cost of the the carrying costs for the homeowners association or the condo association going forward if for them it's even better yeah because you know, at the end of the day it's just they will be maintaining those so it's mm -hmm. It's nice. Yeah. And you can see we have a bit of a different style and yeah, different finishes. Different. So yeah. it's not this homogeneous type development. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. No, I, I, think it's, I think it's great. And I, I appreciate you coming in. Appreciate the status update. It's good to know that uh, there'll be some progress. Um, when do you think, I mean, you, obviously you've been out there doing some trimming, but uh, when do you think you'll be actually pouring foundations? I gotta get Bob to sign off first. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> yeah, before the real cold weather hits is the goal. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. That is hopefully. the goal. Believe me, Bob's been going through all the stuff and helping him push this along. So, yeah, we're trying to get into some foundations before winter hits. We can start doing the rest of the site work, start getting the wastewater treatment plant going. Mm -hmm. Come spring, you know, we're going to start, uh, you know, people getting in there probably around June or so. That's great. That would be my guess because we've got to get some plantings going as well Sure. Uh, for this space. That's great, and for the for the um, watching public who you know are going to start to go crazy over trees have been cut down. What's going on? How can this possibly happen? This has been going on for 
20 years, 21 oh, years. 21 years. How old is your son again? <laughs> he turned 21 at the end of That's September. Right. So. And the, the application has been modified and, and changed and updated. And, and as far was, as I'm it concerned, was mitigated. Yes. Dakota Partners has, has um, come forward with a product that is. That it's buildable. It's buildable. It's about as nice as. as it's the nicest one we've seen on this parcel. Absolutely. And I think it'll be a, a useful um, product for Situa to be able to utilize. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Thank you very much. Appreciate that. For the your effort. time. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for the plans. And uh, we wish you luck. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'll be in touch soon. <laughs> I drive by every morning, so be careful. <laughs> I'll tell my guy. <laughs> um, anything else? Do we have any minutes? I think we're up to date on the minutes. Uh, move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Under wow. Half an hour. The shortest one ever. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them run this is, is this a record? <laughs> <laughs> 26 minutes. <laughs> Make sure you get them to give you a minimum four hours. Make sure you get them to give you a minimum four hours. It's like the police. That was, yeah, four-hour mini. That was that, when I was at Clean Harbors. That was the gig. That's when I was at, when I was oh, at DA. Right. They used to come in, the state police, and you know uh, even the Quincy guys. But the state police, I used to have to sign their sheet. Yeah. They're like, can you sign my sheet? You know, it's like ten o'clock. I'm like, we get we get four hours, even just for coming, yeah. just just for showing up. Yeah. yeah. If they're made in four hours, would I make in like three days as a DA? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's crazy. I think the grid guys. They, they if they're if it's raining.